Welcome to TV African News. Thank you so much for joining us and always being part of us. This is Africa Today. My name is Nahabe Kajura, but first, are the headlines. McCary University registers a slight drop in the first class degrees. UN condemns M23 rebel attacks on peacekeeping force in North Chivu. Somalia's new president officially takes charge of the country. In a sports today, CAF threw Kenya Zimbabwe out of the 2023 African Cup of Nations qualifiers. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. We start with one of our top stories. Now, Mercury University has this year registered a slight drop in the number of students who scooped first class degrees. Now, according to the list released by the university last week, about 283 students will be graduating with first class degrees during the 72nd graduation, which, kicks, which kicked off yesterday compared to the 312 students last year. We have the details. According to the list released by the registrar, Mr. Alfred Namoa Masike, about 12,474 students are expected to graduate in different disciplines. The decline in performance could be attributed to the effects of COVID-19 pandemic that put on hold learning and teaching for some time. However, there is an increase in the number of female students graduating in different disciplines. Of the 12,474 graduates, 6,538 are female, representing 52%, while 5,936 are male, representing 48%. This shows a 1% drop in the number of male students and a 1% increase in the number of female students who are graduating this year compared to last year. During the 7th to 1st graduation of the 12,000, 550 students who graduated, 6,433 representing 51% were female, while 6,117 representing the 49% were male. While addressing the gender conference at McCary recently, the Vice Chancellor Professor Barnabas Mewangwe revealed that girls had overtaken boys in enrollment at the university, indicating the impact of affirmative action embraced 30 years ago. The list for first class degrees for the 72nd graduation also shows a substantial number of female students who scooped first class degrees in different disciplines. Of the eight students who got first class degrees in bachelors of science in food science and technology, for example, five are female. In addition, of the five students of quantitative economics who will be working away with first class degrees, three are female. The first day graduation is to be held at the university until May 27th. Away from that, the chairman of the Global Pan-African Movement, Major General Kahinda Otafide, has urged Africans to be united if they are to drive colonialism out of Africa. Now he said this as Uganda joins the rest of Africa states to commemorate the 59th anniversary of the African Liberation Day tomorrow, the 25th of May, 2022. We have the details. Addressing journalists at the Minister of Internal Affairs headquarters in Kampala, the President of the Global African Movement, also the Minister for Internal Affairs, Major Jeno Kahindo Tafire, said the problem with Africa is the people of Africa themselves being divided, hence calling upon African leaders to make efforts and unite the people of Africa. So we the leaders must put together, put together our act and save the people of Africa. Especially you, the young ones. Me, I'm uh, more in the and... Don't you believe I'm more in the gap? My past, we can catch up with me. <laughs> <laughs> when you are dealing with Uganda, we are dealing with a single, single country. When you are dealing with Africa, you are dealing with the continent. You can punish Uganda, but Africa is too big to swallow. You understand? If the Africans stood together for singleness of purpose, the rest of the world would respect us. He urged African countries to unite, which will help them gain strength and drive poverty out of Africa. And to overcome this poverty, we must come together. 
We must remove the border of Tanzania, the border of Uganda, the border of Sudan, the border of Congo, become one people. Become one people. Who says an attorney from Sudan is a Sudanese and an attorney from Uganda is a Ugandan? But they are attorneys. They don't speak Rome. <laughs> On 25th May 2022, Many African countries celebrate the hard-fought achievement of their freedom from European colonial powers. Celebrations will be held at colonial ceremonial grounds under the theme, The Africa We Want. The purpose of the day was to annually mark the liberation movement's progress and to symbolize the determination of the people of Africa to free themselves from foreign domination and exploitation. Nalugo Muyingo, Africa Today. Now moving on in the top stories, Uganda will on 25th May join the rest of Africa states to celebrate Africa Liberation Day the first time since 1963. Now celebrations will be held on Wednesday 25th May 2022 at Kololo Ceremonial Grounds under the theme The Africa We Want. At a press conference held at the Ministry of Defense headquarters in Mbuya, Defense spokesperson Brigadier General Felix Kulaije said the idea of the African Liberation Day was introduced by the Pan African Federalist Movement, which prompted the UPDF together with the Minister of Defense to join Ugandans and celebrate this day. He said the ministry celebrates that day to appreciate the efforts made by the people of Africa to liberate themselves from colonial powers. He said the challenges faced by many African states, which include poverty and corruption, can be dealt with if African states become united. Rubaha Mugabe, one of the organizers of the African Liberation Day, says this day is meant to make the people of Africa appreciate their origins. African Freedom Day was founded during the first conference of independent African states, which attracted African leaders and political activists from various countries in Ghana on April 15, 1958. Thank you so much, your reporter. We take a quick break. We shall come back with international news. Welcome back for the break. You're still watching TV Africa, the right to know. In international news, the United Nations on Sunday accused M23 rebels of liberately attacking peacekeepers in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo where fighting between the rebels and the Congolese army resumed on Thursday. In a statement released by MUNISCO, the UN force in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the special representative of the UN Secretary General in the DRC, being to cater condemned in the strongest terms the attacks by the M23 movement against the armed forces in the DRC and against municipal peacekeepers in Shanghai area in the territory of Rushuru, North Chivu province. According to the statement, after attacking Congolese army positions, M23 rebels deliberately targeted municipal peacekeepers in the area who responded in accordance with their mandate. According to residents interviewed from Goma, the capital of North Chivu, MONUSCO has engaged helicopters against the rebels. The M23 is a former Tusi rebellion that was defeated in 2013 by the DRC's armed forces and re-emerged late last year, blaming Kinshasa authorities for not respecting commitments to demobilize its fighters. Fighting resumed in April between the army and the movement of the first day of consultations in Nairobi between the Congolese government and the rebel groups active in eastern DR Congo. At the time, the Congolese presidency said it had obtained Kenyan mediation to expel the M23 branch, which it accused of having resumed hostilities. Moving on in international news, the outgoing president of Somalia, Mohamed Abdullahi Famajo, handed over power to the new president, Hassan Sheikh Mohammed, on Monday. Now, the new president will now have to steer the Horn of Africa country in eradicating insecurity caused by the Islamist group Al Shabaab. We have the details. Mohamed Abdullahi Famajo, Somali's outgoing president, thanked Allah because he was handling over president's office to the newly elected president of the federation. He will have to face several major challenges, a historic drought which could lead to famine, is ranging in the country which is also plagued by an insurgency of radical Islamists, the Shabaab. 
Hassan Sheikh Mohamud, newly elected president of Somalia, said that yesterday was a historic day that they should always remember when the outgoing president handed him over the office peacefully. As the president, he requested all Somali people, wherever they are, to support him and asked them for their full confidence. Mohamud bid for Majo in the Horn of African Countries election held on May 15th, gathering 214 votes against the latest 110 votes in the third round. Moving on in international news, Niger President Mohamed Bazoum on Monday held his country's military cooperation with Germany as a blueprint for other partnerships after meeting with Chancellor Olaf Scholz in Niamey. We have the details. The Niger leader Mohamed Bauzoum welcomed the Germany's decision to prolong Operation Gazelle under which it trains Niger's special forces. Scores visited German soldiers attached to Operation Gazelle in the West Tahoe region on Monday morning and said he could see how successful it really is. He added that at the security situation in the Sahel region is very difficult and that really good cooperation is needed. Niger is the poorest country in the world, according to the benchmark of the UN's Human Development Index. The landlocked Sahel state is struggling with a reputation of corruption and volarity. Neighboring Mali has since 2012 been ranked by a jihadist insurgency by groups linked to Al-Qaeda and the so-called Islamic State. That violence has spread to both Niger and Burkina Faso. Scholes confirmed on Monday that Germany would continue to take part in the UN peacekeeping mission in Mali. Earlier this month, the German government decided to raise its Minas Ma contingent to a maximum of 1,400 troops from 1,100 previously to help plug gaps left by a French pullout. Away from that, Egypt, host of the next United Nations summit on climate change, will push countries to make good on their pledges to sharply reduce greenhouse gas emissions, facilitate a non adversarial talks on compensation to developing countries for global warming impacts, and allow climate activists to protest, say the incoming president of COP27. In an interview on Monday with the media, the country's foreign minister, Sameh Shaki, who is also the president-designate of the next annual conference of the parties to be held in November in the Red Sea Resort City, Sham El Sheikh, called the overall goal implementation. Shukri said that the last summit held last year in Glasgow in Scotland finalized many commitments made during the Paris Agreement in 2015, which aimed to reduce emissions and limit global warming to 1.5 Celsius since pre-industrial times. Shukri, who was attending the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, said that the commitments and the pledges now have to be implemented in all sectors of the climate change agenda, whether it's an adaptation, mitigation of finance, laws and damage. In recent years, many developing nations and the activists have increased long-standing calls to establish a fund to compensate poor countries for the devastation brought about by climate change disproportionately caused by rich countries because of past emissions. Many supporters of the idea of in cold loss and damage hope to progress on it in November. Their arguments could get a boost by the symbolic significance of this conference being held in Egypt, a developing nation in the North Africa. Well, thank you so much, reporter. Africa Today takes a quick break. We shall come back with business, health, and sports.
Welcome back for the break. You're still watching TV Africa, the right to know. In a business news, Senegal President and current Chair of the African Union, Mackay Sol, said on Sunday that he would travel to Russia and Ukraine soon on behalf of AU. Now, Sol said this at a press conference with visiting German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, whose trip is focused on the geopolitical consequences of the war in Ukraine. Speaking at the news conference after the meeting, Sell also said that Senegal was ready to work on supplying liquid natural gas to Europe, but it needed to be supported in its participation under better conditions than those currently offered by their partners. On the trip to Russia and Ukraine, Sell said that he had received a mandate from the African Union to undertake the trip for which Russia had extended an invitation. Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which has hit African economies hard due to rising cereal prices and fuel shortages, has met with a divided African response. In early March, Senegal abstained from voting on a United Nations resolution overwhelmingly adopted that called on Russia to withdraw from Ukraine. However, a few weeks later, it voted in favor of another resolution demanding Russia hold the war. Nearly half of African nations obtained or did not vote in the two resolution votes. Senegal is believed to have significant deposits of natural gas along its border with Mauritania at a time when Germany and other European countries are trying to reduce their dependence on importing Russian gas. In our health news today, the World Health Organization on Monday warned that the global coronavirus pandemic is not yet over. Now, addressing opening session of the World Health Organization's annual assembly in Geneva, Tedros told governments to increase their vigilance and attention towards the disease. Take a look at the story. In his speech, Dr. Tedros Adhanom appointed out the reluctance towards the pandemic whereby the mandatory COVID-19 measures have been relaxed in many countries. Dr. Tedros said that the virus has surprised them at every turn and a storm that has torn through communities again and again. He added that the pandemic will not magically disappear, but the leaders can end it because they have the knowledge, have the tools, and science has given them the upper hand. Tedros also noted that almost 1 billion people in lower-income countries still had not been vaccinated and are fighting the emergence of other outbreaks like Ebola and monkeypox, among others. Dr. Tedros said that their colleagues around the world are responding to outbreaks of Ebola in Democratic Republic of Kong, monkeypox and hepatitis of unknown cause and complex humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Somalia, South Sudan, the Syrian Arab Republic, Ukraine and Yemen. The World Health Organization chief also appealed to the world community to choose peace for health, health for peace. Tedros is expected to be appointed for a second five-year term this week at the World Health Assembly. Sports News Today, Confederation of African Football has thrown Kenya and Zimbabwe out of the Total Energies Africa Cup of Nations Quote Deval 2023 qualifiers. We have the details. The decision to eliminate the aforementioned two nations is a consequence of having failed to have their suspensions by FIFA lifted in time. It should be noted that CAF had included them in the official draw earlier in April 2022 on condition that the suspension must be lifted two weeks before their first match day. However, this has not been the case given the fact that the first match day of the qualifiers came in the first week of June. Kenya and Zimbabwe were suspended for political interference and have not yet met the criteria required by the FIFA Congress as a prerequisite for lifting their suspension. Because of the suspension, Groups C and K will be composed only of three teams and the order of the matches will be maintained in accordance with the match schedule that has been communicated to the teams after the draw. Lastly, the first and runner-up teams of those groups who qualify to the final tournament. 
Well, thank you so much for being a loyal audience from where we started from. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We should keep updating you. It is TV Africa.